Hey guys, how y'all doing? It's me, Johnny, and welcome back to another one of our videos. It is literally a few seconds before deadline, and I am in a spot where I'm 31st in the under 23. And if I drop down to the 32nd, that will be a tier 3. If I stay in the 31st position, that will be a tier 2 under 23 rare. Which means your boy is going ahead and getting himself another week of going ahead and winning something. Which is great. As long as I can win a reward every single week, I'm very pleased as you guys know. And this would be the first time that we have won in four consecutive game weeks. 262, 263, 264 and now 265. Let me show you how we actually pull this off. So we are looking at Tsunemoto, who is obviously the GOAT. Um, he is uh, putting us into a position where we possibly are going to be 32nd or 31st. I don't know. On Sorare's page itself, it says 31st. We'll have to see what happens right there. But the team itself, pretty disappointed with Kirkchu in that game. I was hoping he would get a decisive in that matchup. But then again, he was up against very good midfielders compared to the ones that he was up against in the LADVC. And it turned out to be a good choice to not necessarily uh, play Dimitri Paye this week. I mean, obviously, I couldn't have played him in any team anyways. But actually, he did get 62 points. GG's. He did get something in the end. Uh, his, his score was like 40. So he must have gotten a decisive that I completely forgot about. Let me just double check here. No, he didn't. Hey, well, well done. Well done, Dimitri Paye. Anyways, Sinistera, as I said before, I said this. I, I thought that Marseille's fullbacks... Are absolutely awful. I said that down the wings there will be lots of space for for Feyenoord to run through, and I thought players like Sinistera and Reese Nelson was would cause havoc, and it really happened exactly that way. People thought Marseille was easily going to be getting past Feyenoord, but I truly believe that Feyenoord at home with their fans backing them with the atmosphere could easily win this game, and they have done so three two, and now. It's going to be a battle in Marseille. Let's see who goes through. Marseille definitely has to try a lot harder. Defensively, they will have to do so much better. I mean, we can see it right here. Saliba with the 38 points. But we had the likes of Khaled Akar absolutely ruining his team. He had a terrible pass back to Mandanda where Cyril Dessers just ran through and scored. I really like Dessers, by the way. Like, this is someone that I'd be pretty interested in next season in terms of like a super rare, possibly. I really like Dessers. He's very, very good in what he does. And uh, just generally a good team player as well, from what I can tell so far. But yeah, generally speaking, that Feyenoord Marseille game was absolutely incredible. And Tsunemoto today in a 3-0 victory, got himself 72 points. The guy's just ridiculous. I just need to work up his percentages. 3.5% uh, is just not good enough. So hopefully we can get him pushing up towards the 4, the 5, and all that good stuff. But, guys, if we go into this game week that is coming up, we have an issue, a massive issue. When we go to All-Star Rare Pro, I can show you what the issue is. So, I already know the starting lineup to this game. Tokyo against Gamba Osaka. I know for a fact that Slovic is playing, but King Morishige is not playing. And he has not trained in the last few days. Now, that puts me into a position where I would be risking some of my best matchups this game week with the likes of Kirkchu, Sinistera, and Vitinha coming up with amazing odds and good matchups. I'd be risking a lot here. Now, Feyenoord does technically still need to win. If we go to Netherlands right here and we take a look at the league table, you can see that Feyenoord is on 64 points in that third position. They don't necessarily want Twente to overtake them. Twente is obviously right behind them. And Twente is playing against Heracles, who are 12th. So Feyenoord can't really play too much of a rotational team. In my opinion, at least, they shouldn't. And that should mean that the likes of Kukcher and Sinistera, despite the big match against Marseille coming up, should be playing. Now, this would be a ridiculous lineup. Um, captaining someone like Kukcher, for example, would have us in the first position. We would have won All-Star Rare Pro in Game Week 260. Um, which is <laughs> quite interesting to see, obviously. Um, what, what, did, what did we actually get in game week 260? I think we came in third, right? That was the week where we came in third. Let me just double check. Uh, game week 260. No, actually, no. We didn't win anything in game week 260. 
I should have put those guys into All-Star Rare Pro. But I, I think at that point, I didn't even have them. Yeah, first week with them was Takaoka. Second week was Onana. So I couldn't have even had them. Uh, but generally speaking, it just shows that this team is extremely strong. Now, do I want to risk going ahead and putting these players into one squad if I know that Morishige is not injured and he's not playing this game? Now, this might sound stupid to you guys, but at the same time, they have two games in this game week against Gamba and then against Avispa. Now, that puts me into a position where apparently I've asked multiple people now, if he doesn't play in this first game where he isn't even on the bench, which he isn't, that is ideal. He's not allowed to be in the squad. And then he plays in the next game in game week 266. That means that score actually works for him. Now, Morishige had a back injury, and I don't know what the issue is exactly, but I am going to be risking playing this team with the likes of Morishige in there, but I am not risking my best performers. So the way I'm going to put this up is I'm going to go with the best performers in the All-Star Rare team. Instead, here, I'm going to go with Pablo Ruiz. I'm going to go with Chicharito. And then the third option was going to be, um, was it Tsunemoto? No, it wasn't Tsunemoto. Who was my third option here? I need to... Oh, yeah, Von Duje. He's a very good scorer, and he was a sub in the last game, which probably means that he's going to be playing this game uh, in the a AFC. Going to be a good matchup, hopefully. And uh, he's a very high scorer normally. So um, that is going to be the lineup that I'm sending in. Um, technically speaking, that is what I'm hoping will do best. All-star rare then, because I only have one other goalkeeper that plays. I don't know if Mandanda plays or not. We go with Crepo. We go with uh, Tsunemoto. Then we have Kukchu. Then we have Sinistera. And of course, as the final additional player, the one with the best matchup, the one with something to prove, Porto is currently, uh, has just lost the first game in a long time. They're going to play against this team and I fully expect Porto to smash Vizela and, uh, you know, guarantee that first position in their league. If we take a look at it uh, in Portugal, we can see that Porto is on 82 points. They haven't secured the title yet, right? Three more games to go. Technically, if they win this game at home, they can celebrate the title in front of their home fans, which is obviously something you want to do. Vizela conceding 49 goals this season. Uh, does not look good at all. So technically, that lineup right there looks extremely strong. I think they're going to do a great job. And um, that is why I, I'm not risking them in the All-Star Rare Pro team. So again, if we go into this, 15 minutes left right here. Let me show you my teams again here. So you can see Crepo, Tsunemoto, Kirkchu, Sinistera, Vito Ferreira for the All-Star, which I have high hopes for. If LAFC can pick up a clean sheet, we have a really, really good chance here to win something massive. In All-Star Rare Pro, we are risking it. We're waiting for King Morishige to come back. Now, Slovic's score from this game will count, so I'm hoping that they can pick up a clean sheet without uh, Morishige at the back, which is going to be an issue. Uh, but even then, Slovic has good AA scores from what I've seen so far, makes multiple saves throughout the games. And uh, hopefully then Masato Morishige will come back for the second game and score. If he does that, that's great. Uh, if he doesn't, well, then I have thrown away a bunch of players where I wasn't necessarily sure that they would do well anyways. Now, the only issue I have is I do have some good performers that are not playing now. I have seen Marseille rest Dimitri Payet too many times, and that is why I'm not risking him. Lucas Biglia has disappointed me lately, and their odds are looking too bad. Dembele against Marseille, against uh, Olympique uh, Marseille, he is going to maybe do well. I'm not sure. It's a tough matchup for them. Marseille really needs to win that game. So playing at home, I don't know if Dembele goes ahead and scores in that matchup. Um, so we're not going to trust in that too much. Masraoui is injured. Saliba... I do think that Lyon will score. They have good wingers as well. Wingers cause the issues for Marseille all the time. So Lyon will probably score in this game, which um, is at least the 10 points missing from Saliba. He's quality. I probably could put him in there instead of one of the midfielders. But I have a good feeling about the midfielders that I've put in. Harriel is uh, away against Nashville. Nashville, I believe, are opening their own stadium for the first time. So 
I can see that one being a very important match for them to go ahead and win. So Harriel, I'm not too sure on if he's going to do too well. The player with the best um, like opponent score is Amaya. And they have basically the same odds. He is playing away though. If he was playing at home, I probably would have put Amaya in there instead of one of the midfielders. Jesus Ferreira has been disappointing. I need him to step up his game. Ideally, I need Ferreira to get a decisive in this matchup to have my faith back in him again. Ueda at home, he has not scored in the last few matches, also didn't score today. So that's put, that puts me into a position where I'm not too happy with him. Harada is our reward, has a decent score here, but I'm not interested in going ahead and putting him into a lineup. So technically, that is the reasoning as to why I'm going with this and leaving out so many players. I need to put all these guys into training lineups in a second. But guys, that is it. That is the lineup that we have. And in terms of the ETH that we still have on the club, we still have around 1.41 uh, ETH remaining. And I still haven't made my choice in terms of moving forward and the players that I need to put into um, into future summer lineups. I am keeping an eye out, an eye out for super rare uh, auctions of MLS players in the upcoming days. Also, big minus situation, bad, bad situation for us. We have uh, Hadel coming in with a red card and he could be banned for three games, which would be the entire rest of the season. That puts him into a very bad spot and our gallery as well, because he could be losing his starting lineup goalkeeper position very easily throughout that period. But that is me done today, guys. I wish you the best. Hopefully you guys are going to be successful this weekend. I, I just don't know, man. It's going to be a mess for me. Have a good day. Take care and peace.